So let's talk about LUTs in Final Cut. That's better. Where was I? Oh, LUTs in Final Cut Pro. So should you use them? Aren't they just cheats for people who don't know how to use the color grading tools? Not at all. If you do use them, can you combine them with grading tools? What kind of clips should you apply them to? Should you use creative LUTs or camera LUTs? If you use camera LUTs, should you use the built-in camera LUTs or custom camera LUTs? And where do you even get custom camera LUTs or creative LUTs? Well, we just released a brand new tutorial called Working with LUTs in Final Cut Pro, and it will answer all of your LUT-related questions. It's on sale for a limited time, so check out the link below. Now, to work with LUTs properly, you've got to understand something about color spaces. So today on MacBreak Studio, we're sharing the first full lesson of the tutorial that explains what color spaces are, how they relate to LUTs, and why you should care. Let's dive in. Before we dive into the specific workflows for working with LUTs in Final Cut Pro, I want to set the stage by explaining the concept of a color space. Once you have a good grasp of color spaces, you'll be able to work with LUTs with greater confidence in any application. Note that the subject can go very deep. I'm going to simplify things so we don't get lost in the weeds. The human eye can perceive a vast array of hue, saturation, and luminance, the components of color. Video cameras need to convert these colors to electrical signals, and displays, including the ones on the camera, need to convert those signals back into colors. Currently, cameras can't capture and displays can't display this full range of visible light, although they're getting closer. That's basically why we have color spaces. They identify the range of hues, saturation, and brightness levels that cameras capture and displays display. A color space is defined by two key ingredients, gamma and gamut. These words sound similar, but they refer to completely different things. Let's start with gamut. A gamut is a range of something. As it relates to a color space, it's a range of colors. Usually, it's a subset of all colors visible to the human eye, and it's often represented as an area inside a chromaticity diagram, like this image here, that shows some common color spaces, which are the triangles inside the multicolored area that represents the full range of visible hues and saturations with the most saturated colors at the edges. Note that this is a two-dimensional representation of color. It shows hues and saturation levels, but it doesn't show different brightness levels. Here's the gamut for Rec. 709, the standard for delivering and displaying HD and UHD material. Rec. 709 is an SDR, or Standard Dynamic Range Gamut, meaning that the brightness values of each color are limited to 100 nits nits being a way to measure brightness. Rec 2020 is the delivery display color space for HDR, or high dynamic range material. The main difference between HDR and SDR, in addition to being able to display more saturated hues, is that HDR can display more brightness values than SDR. This can be represented in a third axis extending out of the chart like this. So, gamut is a range of colors. Gamma, or the gamma curve, defines how the brightness values of an image are encoded when it's recorded. Images are encoded with a gamma curve in part to reduce the amount of data that's required to store them. The reason this works is that our eyes are much more sensitive to changes in low levels of brightness than high levels of brightness. So recording devices can compress the brightest areas of an image much more than the darkest. This compression results in a curve like this. Since they are encoded in this nonlinear fashion, these images need to be decoded when they're displayed. Part of that decoding process is gamma correction, reversing that curve. 
Your display does this automatically for the gamma curve it is expecting to receive based on the standard, like Rec. 709 or Rec. 2020. Okay, so gamut is a range of colors, and gamma is how the brightness values of those colors get encoded. Together, gamut and gamma is all you need to define a color space. Whenever you hear the phrase color space, you should ask yourself, what's the gamut? And what's the gamma? Now, there are color spaces for recording images, and there are color spaces for displaying images. When you shoot video, for example, you can shoot in Rec. 709, in HLG, which is a form of HDR, or in Log. More on that in a moment. When that video is displayed, depending on the capability of the display device, it could be in Rec. 709 or Rec. 2020. So, what do color spaces have to do with LUTs? Well, a LUT, or lookup table, is simply a big list of numbers that converts one set of colors into another set of colors. Often, but not always, you can use a LUT to convert from one color space to another. And where does log fit into all this? Well, log encoding is a way of preserving dynamic range, brightness values, so it's the gamma part of a recording color space. The gamut part is the range of colors captured by each particular camera. So log is not a display color space, it's a recording gamma curve. To display log footage, you need to convert it to a display color space. One way to do that is with a LUT. Another is to color correct it manually. When shooting video, every camera manufacturer has their own color science, their own secret sauce for gamma and gamut. For example, on the Sony a7S III, when you select a picture profile, you're selecting both a gamma, like S-Log3, and a gamut, which Sony calls color mode, like S-Gamut 3.Cine. This color space, S-Log3 slash S-Gamut 3.Cine, is your starting point for grading in post. It's critical that you know the source color space of your footage if you're using LUTs to convert from one color space to another. So, there you have a simplified explanation of what a color space is and how it's used for both recording and displaying images. If you internalize this information, it will be hugely helpful to you when working with video in any application. So what do you think? Did you find this information useful? Leave us a comment below. And if it piqued your interest, check out the tutorial. In under an hour, you'll become knowledgeable enough about how LUTs work in Fonica Pro, and really any application, that you'll be able to more quickly and easily create beautiful images by combining LUTs and grading tools and knowing what your options are to support your storytelling goals. We'll see you next time here on MacBreak Studio.